Hey, Bed Buns. Happy solstice season. I hope you had a nice time with family, found or otherwise. I know I spent a lot of time with my family. Um, so one minor thing before we start getting to the design notes is that I've noticed I've become a lot less active on Twitter for, uh, you know. So if you like these sort of patch note updates I would give on my Knife Bunny Twitter, I would highly recommend following me um, on Mastodon. Um, at zoe at wandering dot shop where i'm going to be posting those patch notes under the hashtag knife bunny games so yeah that's it if masana is not your thing maybe check out discord where i stream of consciousness this stuff or even on the break my game discord where i've been keeping sort of a bridge design diary so yeah yeah so hi a couple things that i almost forgot um, Protospiel is going to be on January 14th, the week that weekend, and I'm planning on going to it. It's one of my favorite online playtesting events. So if you want to check out prototypes, there's going to be a whole lot of them there. I myself am planning on bringing bread at the very least. I'm hoping to also bring Opacity and Velocirapture if I can manage to get them in, ready in time. And then um, in addition to that, on the following weekend, on January 28th, I'm going to be hosting my second anniversary of Life Bunny, uh, Game Jamboree. It's a short four hour live streamed event where um, me and other people in the Life Bunny like Discord and community participate in a game jam with very little rules, like no restrictions. It's just pretty much make whatever you want, work on whatever you want as a team or individually and make whatever comes to mind. Uh, last year we had the theme of no rules and a lot of cool projects came out of that. And this year I'm going to have a different theme that I have not decided on yet and will be announced at the start of the jam. So if you'd like to participate, you could come check out the Discord or you could join us on Twitch. So yeah. Hey there, the real Zoe Prime here. Before publishing the vlog, I decided I wanted to do something a little odd. I'm going to be adding an address option to my uh, newsletter sign up, the email one. So um, if you would like to receive something kind of odd and silly from me in February, um, sign up to that. If you already have a subscription, I'm sending out a, a wrap up of 2022 newsletter and you'll see update options in that. So. Um, I promise I won't send you much mail. It, I, I can guarantee it because I hate sending physical mail, but I'm going to make an exception for this. So, um, yeah, um, that's it. So let's get back to the false Zoe. And um, there's going to be another Zoe Prime later. And do not trust it. It is a dangerous. So let's get into it. Um, I said in my last newsletter that there was not going to be a lot of design updates this month. And I was dead wrong. Um, at PAX Unplugged, I got a whole lot of testing done on like almost everything. And um, I got a lot of ideas of directions I wanted to take everything. So, so yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start with persuasion. Um, I can't divulge too much, uh, but just to give an idea of like some plans that we have, uh, like development works probably not going to start until like February or March or so, but yeah, um, but like the publisher and I agree that some work needs to be done for like the balancing of the game. Like I feel in particular that the three suit cards have like a real potential to throw a wrench in first play experiences. And I don't, I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. I feel like they're important cards, but uh, for those learning games, for those first experiences, it could really screw things up. Um, secondly, publisher had a lot of really cool ideas on the direction to take it like production wise. And, um, well, I think that's cool. I am concerned about accessibility of the game in terms of like size and cost. So we'll see how it goes. Um, my plan is to have the print and play always available. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Hey there, uh, Zoe Prime here in my pajamas and without makeup. Uh, while I was writing the closed captions for this video, it was brought to my attention that Dan Throw from Space Biff 
ranked uh, my game Persuasion as uh, number three among games of 2022 about trauma. Um, I know I joke a lot about making games, uh, like hashing out my trauma through my games. So it felt incredible to be seen. Um, and so what, what an amazing honor to be recognized and what amazing titans to be like ranked among in that top six. So yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now back to you, uh, Zoe Auxiliary. Or, or my auxiliary. Am I even real? Next, um, Unraveled. Um, I feel very good about how it was received when I pitched it and play tested it at PAX Unplugged. Um, it was very well received, so I'm feeling very confident about that design. I'm not feeling like I need to do any more changes to the design work of it. I am not confident with the card effects because those are designed to sort of be utilized after players have sort of mastered the sort of logic like um, foundation of the game. And unfortunately, that's really difficult to test and play test swaps. So I either need like an external developer or like a publisher to help me with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there is a chance that like I'm going to submit to the Edison contest, the cardboard Edison contest. And depending on how things go with that, I'm thinking about potentially putting it on the Game Crafter as a sort of prototype edition and reimburse people for it if they give me like detailed feedback and include their like names in the rule book. But we'll see. That's like the end of that contest, I think is like way out into like the middle of the year. So um but I'll turn I'm also thinking about starting some regular play tests in the um Knife Bunny Discord. I know there are some people who are interested in playtesting it with some regularity. I just need to get over my anxiety of asking people for help. Um, hey, Real Zoe Prime here again. I decided I'm going to try organizing this this month. So if you're interested in playtesting Unraveled um, on a regular basis, I'm looking for some like extended playtesting. So like enough such that you've played it enough that you understand like that you need to play the conspirator card effects in order to play competitively against the sloops. If you're interested in playing it um like for that for that uh, late game sort of strategy, then uh I would be interested in your help. Um you could come join my Discord server where we'll try organizing it. My plan is to organize it uh try to figure out a time this month, uh in the month of January I mean. And um and for your time and for your reports, I will include your names in the rulebook as a development play tester. So um, yeah, if you're more interested in play testing it physically, I'm going to be working on a print and play and putting that up on itch.io. So stay tuned. Um, I'm joining the Discord if you're interested. And thank you. All right, back to the false Zoe. Yeah, so that's Unraveled. Um, feeling good about that. Um, secondly, um, Opacity was another game that I felt like was in a similar spot to Unraveled. And I couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> After testing it, PAX Unplugged, um, thinking about doing like a complete overhaul of that design. There was just like a few things about it. First of all, like the physicality of it was really clunky. Writing um, the shape bonuses every single between every single game and also uh, shifting the sliding the cards around every single game way too finicky i think for to expect people to do for like a as often as they were doing it so that's one thing uh, the other thing is that this is something i've been feeling for a while but a lot more confident after that play test um uh, after testing that packs unplugged is that it feels like the rules change too much like like perhaps a little too chaotically, um, enough that it distracts from what I felt like was like the vision of the game. So I'm going to try to overhaul it so that, um, so like for, first of all, games are expected to be a little bit longer. I'm not going to cling to the idea that the games could be played like in a single round of, or of playing all the cards in your hand that, because you don't, really get to experience the real value of the game that way, I feel like. 
Um, it feels like it needs to take place over multiple hands um, to really utilize the fact that you could closet cards to remove them from your hand and adjust your strategy and play off of what people played the previous rounds. So, so that's one thing. Um, second thing is that I'm thinking about having like a sort of stage in between Parliament when cards are added to Parliament. That's something that I'm like calling tentatively the spotlight. And the idea is that cards cycle through the spotlight and cards in the spotlight don't add their rules, but they still add their shape bonuses. And so you would play uh, rounds until the entire spotlight was cycled. And um, and by default, that would be like four rounds. And I'm sorry, three rounds, uh, <laughs> numbers. Um, anyways, and so the idea would be that um, that would be like an entire game, the cycling of the spotlight, which comparably before would be like cycling of parliament, except um, cycling of parliament meant that you would introduce four whole rules changes in that per time period. Um, so a couple things that come with this is that uh, with games being expected to last multiple rounds like this, I feel like I could change the win condition a bit. I'm changing it so that instead of just like winning the individual games, um, you have like a sort of semi-cooperative multi-victor win condition, you know, knife bunny it up a bit, where you just have to have a shape um, in the spotlight that matches the two shapes on your advocate card. And the advocate card would be made uh, hidden. Uh, so this would mean that like if you manage to get your two shapes into Parliament, you could feasibly work with the other players to help them win if you want to, you know, night bunny stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about that because I was really not vibing with the very um, competitive, like ne necessarily competitive. Like it was sort of intended that way because um, because it's based off of like my experience, it, like it, it, because it's like based on these like this very competitive culture that we live under, essentially. But uh, that kind of brings me to the other part of this. So the cards in the spotlight wouldn't change the rules, but Parliament would sort of largely stay the same. But since cards would have to cycle through the spotlight first, that would mean that um, the rules that are in Parliament would stay in effect longer, since games would no longer be these quick, like, 10-minute things. They'd be, like, these 30-minute sessions or 40-minute sessions. So... This feels, it feels like I'm emboldened to make the rules changes a lot wonkier. I'm even playing with the idea of the very basic structure of the game being part of these cards. So you could completely change the structure of the game. I, I haven't like had an opportunity to hash this out. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. So that was a lot of stuff about opacity. Um, next game up is, um, Bread. This is the game I've actually been doing the most design work over the past month. Um, and yeah, surprise, <laughs> it's probably been a very long time since a lot of you have heard of it. But um, after testing it, I've been one thing that I've been really struggling to sort of land on is how I want the fire mechanics to work. The fire was like this event that would happen, and the intention was that. It would require you to have like a steady flow of bread in your tableau and so it was something i was really struggling on how to get right and for some reason i was really attached to the idea of it providing a sword double-edged sword benefit but through the design ethos cutting when you can uh, turned out to be the direction that i felt best with so far I simplified it so it just made you burn an additional card uh, while I was in your tableau. And just it, just that and the fact that you had to get rid of it before you could potentially win was like enough for it to, was enough for me, I feel like. The additional burning of the cards meant that if somebody was getting, um, if someone was getting bullied, the game would like end a bit faster. And so that was like another sort of subtle like incentive to help a player who had like the fire. So I'm really happy with how it's playing right now. Um, something that I really want to address before I like go further with it is that um, the theming 
is people are struggling with the fire. I kind of want to change it to famine or something, but I'm having trouble deciding how I want to pick that. And the other thing is that the game is so open-ended and the interactions with the deck are so unconventional that people really struggle with the flow of the game. So I'm convinced that I may need to introduce some like larger cards to sort of serve as like a play area and also as a reference. So that's what I'm working on for there. Um, and let's see, Velocirapture. So Velocirapture was a lot of fun to test, um, but there's a few key things that I'm struggling with there. So first of all, I really feel like this game would benefit from having a larger player count. So what I'm planning on doing since I'm no longer beholden to the 18 card um, limitation for the button shy thing, I'm going to bump up the cards by another 18 cards. So that means 18 more micro games. Who dug it? That's going to be a lot of work. Uh, but luckily, making these like quick, like intentionally messy, like competitive games is actually not too much of a strain. The thing I'm actually worried about is making 18 more coping mechanisms. Um, speaking of which, um, I'm realizing more and more that it's very critical that there be a good balance of people with serious coping mechanisms and people with silly coping mechanisms because too much of one or the other, like if it's, if it's predominantly just one or the other, then the game experience is like, there's not enough friction in the game experience basically. And this is a struggle because I don't want people to be committed to a specific coping mechanism because it's kind of role-playing-esque. And if people are not comfortable with the card they're dealt, I don't want the game to be an uncomfortable experience. So I need to come up with a way where I enforce this sort of balance of these coping mechanisms, but still give people the freedom to sort of get a new card if they want. So that's something I still need to tackle. I have a couple ideas and some of them are cleaner than others. So we'll cross that bridge. <laughs> Um, but I got a lot of work to do and I haven't had a lot of time to do it because of the holiday season and just, yeah, vacation. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a lot of updates. Um, a lot happened at PAX and I probably should not have been so surprised that I'd want to, like, make updates to everything afterwards. But, um, yeah, other than that, just been relaxing with my family, playing games with my kids and... That's our jam. So I hope that you had like, hope you had some time to yourself um, to unwind. And if not, I'm really sorry. Um, I know this is a stressful year for many people. And so let's hope that uh, the new year is a little less stressful. Let's hope that the uh, trajectory of the next year is a little better than the current one. Um, yeah. See you next year. Ciao. Bye-bye.